Okay, in this lecture, we're going to talk about message passing interface. Remember, this is the de facto standard for distributed memory uh, supercomputing. Um, okay, so what it is, um, like I said, it's most useful on uh, distributed memory machines. It's, it's the de facto standard because uh, there really isn't um, real meaningful competitors to it out there anymore. Um, there are a couple of different implementations of it, um, open MPI, uh, in pitch, in the pitch. Uh, most of these have to do with what type of super com supercomputer you're running on, um, and, and usually your system administrator would install these for you. Uh, but you, as the parallel programmer, um, should be able to access the functions uh, in an abstract way via the, the standardized application programming interface that it doesn't matter specifically which version that you're using. Um, again, there are implementations in C and C++ and Fortran, and the way we're going to access it is uh, via the Python wrappers called MPI for Pi that wraps the C++ interface. Um, so in MPI, um, we launch a program as basically separate tasks, each with their own address space and memory, and this requires us to partition the data across tasks. So uh, we could have one large uh, data set. We split it up into different chunks, send those chunks to each uh, individual uh, processor to have some work done on them, and then either reassemble it or do some type of parallel reductions where we're doing additional computations as we bring the data back uh, to a single processor for printing to disk or screen or plotting or something like that. Uh, so in, in, in MPI, uh, data is explicitly moved from task to task. So that is, uh, and that this is where the, you know, the message passing comes from. We are explicitly going to send and explicitly going to receive things, um, messages, that is. Um, and these can be of two classes. They can be point to point. This, is, this would involve explicitly sending an item from one processor and receiving it on another, um, or they could be collective, and that would be sending information from one processor to all processors, or vice versa, from all processors to one processor, or from all processors to all processors. Those are all options, and we'll talk specifically about uh, some of the syntax used to do these different types of communication. <coughs> okay. Again, we're going to use MPI for Pi. This is a an interface very similar to the C++ uh, implementation. So the idea here is that, um, you know, we're going to use Python for its nice syntax and ease of use. But if you ever need, if you learn the concepts of using MPI and Python, it, it will be very straightforward and easy to then move to a, say, C++ implementation uh, if you need that for, for performance, okay? And, and like with all things Python, uh, you know, what you'll lose in performance by using this in Python, you'll gain in a shorter development time. Uh, there is one nicety in that you can communicate Python objects. So, for example, you could uh, communicate entire NumPy arrays. Uh, you know, remember NumPy arrays are objects. Everything in Python is an object. So you can communicate the entire object versus having to split it out uh, into, you know, the, the data and any metadata that surrounds the object itself. So MPI uses communi communicators. Uh, these are basically the, this is how you identify the sets of uh, processes which communicate only within their set. Uh, so this MPI com world is defined as all processes, ranks for your job. And this is the one that you'll almost always call. Um, so uh, it's, it's usually almost always required. When you start every MPI program, you'll almost always see this call to MBI com world. Um, the ranks, what ranks are, they, you can think of them just as IDs for a communicator. So if you have, uh, if you have four processors that you're running on, then, the, then you'll have ranks 0, 1, 2, 3, right? If you have two processors you're running on, you'll have ranks 0 and 1, all right? They're assigned by the system at initialization, uh, and again, they're just a way to specify uh, inf you know, where you're sending and receiving information, right? So uh, here's a very, you know, here's our Hello World program in Python. So uh, we're going to write a file called Hello Pi. Uh, it's going to be a Python program, and from MPI for Pi, we'll import the MPI class. 
Uh, we'll call the com world attribute on it, store that in com, and com is an object then that uh, has additional inf attributes. One of those is ranks. And so this will just print the rank of the processor this runs on. Okay, So we'll um, execute this, which will uh, write a file hello.py, and then from this notebook interface uh, where I've created my slides, we can actually access the command line. Uh, on the command line, we would run this by running MPI EXEC. This is to run an MPI program. Uh, the number of processors here we'll run is two. So this is saying execute an MPI program with two with with two uh, pro with, uh, two ranks. Uh, and then the, ac the actual executable here is going to be Python. And the file we're going to run is the one that we just created here, hello.py. So if we run this on two processors, um, there is what is print to the screen, right? So, uh, hello world, my rank is zero and one. So that's on two processors. And I could actually then change this to four processors and run it again. And there you see, again, uh, we have the same type of result. Uh, six processors. Uh, there we see that. And, and the reason I kept increasing the processors is because I wanted to show you uh, it, it Previously, it was just randomly printing them in order, but that won't always be the case. We can't control um, how these par parallel threads are running on different machines uh, or different processors, and they're sort of racing to print to the screen. So in this case, uh, that's why they're not printed in order. The, the, um, the three is out of, out of order from the rest of them, right? Uh, so it, it was just a coincidence that, that they came back in order in the previous runs. Um, so anyway, <coughs> this is your Hello World program. In MPI. So uh, point to point communication, right? So in this case, we're going to uh, kind of set up the problem. Th th these are all kind of standard things. So in this case, we're going to uh, import the MPI class uh, as well as call the com world. We're going to assign some convenience variables, uh, rank and size. So rank, again, is the, the process ID. Uh, size is the total size, right? So if there, uh, you know, if there are two, uh, if it's run on two processors, the size is two, right? And so what we'll then do is we're going to, on every processor, we'll uh, create a NumPy array that will be, uh, it will have 10 entries, and the 10 entries will be, uh, include the, the rank as numbers. So again, if I'm rank zero, this is going to be 10 zeros. If I'm on rank one, this is going to be 10 ones. Uh, if I'm on rank two, this is going to be 10 twos, right? And there'll be a type uh, float there, OK? And then what we're going to do is we're just going to, if I'm on rank zero, I'm going to send uh, those 10 zeros to rank one, right? So the destination here is rank, in this case, zero plus one, right? So we'll, we'll send those uh, to rank one. Um, if I'm on. Uh, any other rank greater than zero, I'm going to receive from the rank before me and send my information to the rank after me. So again, if I'm rank one, I will receive from rank zero and send to rank two. If I'm rank two, I will receive from one and send to three. Uh, and then finally, if I'm the last rank, uh, then I will just receive uh, from the one before me and not send anything. Okay. Uh, and then there's just uh, then we'll print to the screen what what happened. Okay. So um, if we execute this, we'll create a file called sendreceive.py. And then if we run that on two processors, you'll see what happened, right? So my rank is 0, and I received uh, the 10 ones. And my rank is 1, and I received the 10 zeros, right? And so we can see that if I increase this to 4, uh, now if uh, my rank is 1, I received from 0. Rank is two. I received one. Uh, my rank is three. I received two. And if my rank is zero, I received three. Right. So, uh, in this case, uh, this will always always work like this. Right. So, <coughs> uh, there's an example with five ranks. Okay. So that's a simple send and receive program. It's not that interesting, but we're just uh, just doing the explicit calls. Okay. So then uh, let's take a look at the collective communication. So in, in collective communication, uh, there's basically a broadcast, a gather, a scatter, and a reduction. So in a broadcast operation, we're going to send copies from you know, sort of one 
single processor to all other processors. Okay, so that's a broadcast. <coughs> uh, a a scatter would be that we're going to take some combined data, right? So we're going to ha have some combined data. We're going to split it up into chunks on the main processor and send just the piece, just the chunk, to each individual processor to be worked on, right? Uh, the gather command is then the complement of that. We're going to take those chunks uh, that were work, been worked on on each processor and gather them back to the root processor. And then there's also this reduction command. And in this example, it's uh, it's an addition, but uh, you could also have multiplications and other things. So an example here, what we're doing, if we wanted to add up these four numbers, uh, one, three, five, seven, which of course add to 16, we could add one and three in parallel at the same time that we add five and seven, right? If we had two processors available, we could do that. We could add one and three and get four, uh, add five and seven and get 12, and then <coughs> uh, pull them to, to the root processor and add those two numbers together. Four and 12 would give you 16. And this can be done across you know, as many processors and ranks as you have available. Uh, and again, you can do these type of parallel reductions for addition and, and other, you know, any type of, uh, uh, essentially, uh, any, any type of function that would take multiple arguments. Right? <coughs> okay, so <coughs> here's a, an example of a scatter program, right? So uh, again, just some problem set up. Uh, we do have to, uh, there's, a, there's a, uh, a variable here that we're going to initialize to be empty on every processor that we're going to call the send buffer because it needs to be defined on all the processors, right? Uh, and so um, basically what we're going to do is create this empty processor. Then if we're on rank zero, we're going to create a random array uh, that's equivalent to the number of rows and columns of the size, all right? So if we run it on two processors, this would be a random array of two by two. Uh, we'll print out what that array looks like on the on the root or the, the rank zero processor. We're then going to assign that array to the send buffer. Again, we're protected by this if statement, so this is only going to be assigned to be M on the root processor. And then everywhere we will, you know, now we're outside of this. So this is this this V uh, this com scatter command gets called on every rank uh, because we're not protected by this if statement anymore. Uh, so uh, this gets called again. If you did not initialize send buff to be empty on all processors but zero, it would not be defined, and this would give you an error. Uh, but then what we're going to do is we're going to scatter, uh, scattering the data into the send buff from the root processor. The root processor being zero. Right? Now you could. This is typically to do it from the from the rank zero processor, but uh, you could do this from from any processor if you wanted. So we'll scatter that out, and then on each processor we'll print what was received. Okay. Uh, so if we execute this cell, we're going to write the file scatter.py, and then we can run it on two processors. Okay. So the original array on rank zero was this two by two array, and then we uh, split that up and scattered. So the first row uh, went to rank zero, and the second row. Uh, went to rank one, where additional computations could be done. Right? Again, if we run this on four, uh, there's the original. It's a four by four, uh, and then each, you know, this was scattered out to four processors, uh, uh, all of them uh, getting receiving one row uh, of of the matrix, if you will. Okay, so that's the scatter command. <coughs> Again, gather its, is its complement. Um, initialize the <coughs> some initial file setup there is all the same. <coughs> um, again, we will uh, go ahead and uh, set up the array on a, on a, the the initial processor. We're going to scatter the array, right? So uh, through through this line 14, the program is identical to the program we just looked at. Scatter, okay. Um, I guess through line 15. Right? It's, it's identical to the previous program. We're just scattering the data out. But then what's, what's going to happen next is on each processor, we're going to square it. Right? So we're going to take what's received, square all the entries, 
and then gather them back to the root, uh, back to the root. So this square operation will be done on smaller arrays, add on each rank, and then things will be collected back to the root zero, right? Uh, and so <coughs> if we run that, we'll create a file gather.py, and if we <coughs> run that, we'll see what we have here. So the original array on rank zero is uh, zero, one, two, three. We scatter them out, right? So the first row is received on the on the zero rank, zero and one. The second row is received on this on the first rank, two and three. Uh, then we square those, right? So of course zero squared is zero, one squared is one, so there's no change there. However, on the second line, two squared is four, three squared is nine. So those those that square operation was done on these smaller arrays, on processor, and then things were gathered back for this final printing. So then this is the this final printing is back on the rank zero processor uh, after the square has been performed, right? And and we can run it on four processors, and you can verify that that you'd see the same thing. Again, there's some kind of race condition on printing out the data, so you know. But but again, if you just look, you can verify that what's received uh, here at the end uh, are the squared entries uh, from the original array, and then each of these. Uh, were s sent out one row at a time to the individual process to be squared, uh, you know, therefore dividing the work by four, right? Okay, so uh, a broadcast signals sends a single object to every process. So uh, in this case, we're uh, basically through this line doing everything we did before, uh, scattering, squaring, gathering. Uh, it's just now at the end, what we'll do uh, is send out to every processor the same message. In this case, it's just a string called done, right? So then every processor will print done at the end. Uh, so not too exciting. It's not too different from the previous program. But if we run it, uh, you see again, everything that was there before uh, is still there. And there's now you have these two dones at the end indicating that this is being printed on every processor, um, you know, when it when it's done, when it's actually done. So you can run it on three, and you'll see the same thing, right? So uh, create an original array, we scatter it, uh, we scare, square it and gather it, and then print done on every processor uh, via this broadcast command. Uh, so now a reduce, okay? So uh, in, in this case, we're, we're creating array, uh, we're scattering it, and then we're doing a parallel reduction. So by one call, uh, we're, we're going to do a parallel reduction back to the root uh, reduce uh, back to the root processor. In this case, the default is addition, but you can specify other operators. Okay. So in this case, um, if I run this on two processors, there you'll see um, that. Uh, the original array on, on rank zero is what it was before, zero, one, two, three. Um, each of these received uh, the, a row, so in this case, zero and one, um, and, uh, and two and three. And then a parallel reduction is performed uh, such that the addition of the two entries in the columns um, are performed in parallel. Uh, so if you wanted to know the, the total sum, then all we'd have to do is, is call sum on this on this last uh, array here. So if you wanted to know the the total sum, um, you could do a NumPy sum on um, on the on what's returned at the end. We can just print that. Looks like I forgot it. Yeah. So again, then that's the total sum. So of course, uh, you can see that that is the case, right? Zero one plus zero plus one plus two plus three is in fact six, and this would work um, if we would want to go to higher ranks. Uh, so 
but you can verify that if you add up all those numbers, they, they would add to, to 300. Maybe let's do a smaller example on three. Uh, it's a little bit easier to, to verify there. So uh, that is a, uh, an example of a parallel reduction. So a couple of references. If you have the live slides version, these are hyperlinks. You can link to them. Uh, the documentation for MPI for Pi, as well as uh, this really good website on parallel computing from Lawrence Livermore National Labs that I've referenced before. Uh, again, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, the figures from this talk were taken from, from that, uh, this tutorial as well. 